Hello, everybody. It's Tamara Bennett from Southern Adornments Decor. This is night number two of painting the Triple Fall Paint Pumpkins design. Um, and this is something we do every fall when we are opening up our membership, the Painters Clubhouse. And so if you desire to learn how to paint door hangers like the ones hanging behind me, which you really can't see right now, if you want to learn how to paint just like this and be confident in your painting ability, I want to invite you to come and join us. We have a bonus going on right now. If you join by Friday at midnight, you are going to get this fall pumpkin template and four tutorials showing you different ways to paint it. So whether you're a beginner or a little more advanced or you just love a challenge, there's something for everyone. The one that you're seeing in this picture right here is the most advanced version of it. And it even uses a little bit of leopard print foil and some distressing and some shading. And so it is really, really cute. But if you want to learn to paint those designs and get that free template, you just need to sign up between now and Friday night to get that. Um, who all's here with me tonight? Hey, Dina. Hi, Dana. Is anybody back for night number two? I saw some of you guys comment last night. You were like, I'm here all three nights. <laughs> so I'm so glad. Um, and then, so tomorrow I'm going to be back again for night number three. Last night was night number one, the one hanging up behind me. We painted it kind of whimsical um, as if a beginner were painting it. I'll hold it up for those on TikTok who can't see behind me back there. Um, so this is the original, the beginner um, sort of whimsical look. It's very simple, easy to paint. We did all of the outline work with like a jumbo paint pen. Um, we we drew on the diamond pattern and then we painted it in. We did our polka dots with a little sponge pouncer here and we did this wood grain pattern using a wood grain tool. And I did remember to link my Amazon favorites in the video here for you guys tonight. So if you need to find one of those, it's in my Amazon favorites. Uh, Kathy says you're stuck with me now. That is okay, Kathy. I'm happy to be stuck with you. <laughs> Hopefully you're happy to be stuck with me as well. Hey, Carlene. Hello, Robin, watching from Pigeon Forge. We just got back from Sevierville last, uh, we got back on Sunday. Um, Janet said, I got a heat tool and man, does it make the difference? It does, doesn't it? Um, okay, now that was night number one. Tonight is night number two. Tonight, we're not gonna really go whimsical. We're gonna go more rustic. I think I'm gonna keep my colors the same because I think it would be really cool to see the same design painted with different styles. So style number one, night number one was whimsical. Style night number two is going to be rustic. And then tomorrow night, we're going to go right the opposite direction and do something totally glam. Like I'm thinking glitter and foils and bling. And so that'll be tomorrow night. So uh, tonight we're going to do the rustic thing. I might try out a little bit of splatter paint. I haven't 100% made up my mind on exactly how I want to paint this yet. So you guys may be in for a little bit of a roller coaster with this one. Um, and I think I'm going to do some dry brushing. I might even get into using a little bit of glazing medium. Have any of you guys used this stuff before? you mix it with your paint and you can do like a faux finish on something like make something look antiqued and so I think that might give it even a little bit more of a rustic look if we did that so let me know what you think um Sandy says I love your top thank you Sandy I bought this last week at uh polishing the pulpit when we went there was a vendor booth set up of clothing and it is from a business called the pearly peacock and I wore it to church tonight it's real cute. It's got these cute little floofy sleeves. And of course, I love color. So it's very colorful. Um, T Teresa says, I'm going to be here for all three nights and Friday night. Thank you for reminding me about Friday night, Teresa, because Friday night, it doesn't end. Friday night, we're going to be kicking off the final night to join Painters Clubhouse and get this bonus. It'll be the end of our launch week. And I'm going to be live with three of our Painters Clubhouse sisters, Marie Mosley, Christy Rayner, and Sandy McWhorter. And though, so all four of us will be chatting and painting and just having some girl time while you guys hang out and ask all the questions. Um, Michelle says, I'm back. Can't be Thursday or Friday. Uh, I will work the next three. Okay, that'll be fine. If you, if you want to catch these videos, same goes for you, TikTok. If you want to catch these videos on the replay, they are all being streamed to Facebook and YouTube, and they will be there. Now, on Facebook and YouTube, you have a different view than what we have on TikTok. We actually have a side-by-side. -side. I'm on one side, and the overhead camera is on the, set, on the split screen. And so it's actually a little bit of a better view because you're seeing top-down exactly what I'm seeing. So if you want to see all the comments everybody's making and the things that I put up on the screen and whatnot, 
and that angle, you'll need to switch to Facebook or YouTube. But you can also catch the replay there when you get ready to paint it. Now, how can you paint this one at home? Let's go over that real quick before we start painting. We have a free template for you that you can go and download right now in our um, on our website at southerndornmentsdecor.com. So if you're on TikTok, go straight on over to my website. It's right there at the top. It's a free template. Now, if you don't know what a template is, you print it out on your computer. You trace it on the wood um, using graphite paper, and then you can cut out your own wood shape. Or you could trace it on a canvas if you print out the smaller version, or you could trace it on a wooden shape like a round or a square or something like that. And you could still follow along and paint with us. Um, if you're handy with a jigsaw or a scroll saw, you can actually cut out this exact shape following the template. And then um, another option is if you're like not wanting to cut out, you just want to paint on one just like I am. These are laser etched blanks and we sell these at shopdoorhangers.com. This one is an 18 inch size and it's $24. And so you can get that um, by going to shopdoorhangers.com and searching up the triple fall pumpkins. Hi Kay, happy birthday. Hey Amy, hey Kelly. Uh, hello Rita, hi Jane. She said, I just got my hello fall today. Gotta find the paint. She's talking about this other one hanging up behind me. <clears throat> uh, Tammy can't wait to paint the Making Spirits Bright. That was the freebie that we gave away yesterday. It was our early bird bonus. Um, and so, so several of you guys signed up for Painters Clubhouse right away and got that bonus. All right. So while we are chatting, I'm going to go ahead and do what we did last night and kind of get our base coats down. Um, because like I told you, I think it's going to be really cool if I can stay with the same colors each night and just um, kind of like make them more rustic each or make, make tonight's more rustic and then uh, Thursday night's more glam. So that way you can kind of see even with the same colors on a design, what the style change would look like. <clears throat> Some of you guys have told me, and I was actually thinking of you when I, when I said this, Marie, she popped right in just there in the comments, um, that this is like your favorite thing that I do all year. And so doing the um, three ways to paint something kind of inspires a lot of you guys to think outside the box on ways that you can paint one design a bunch of different ways. And so if you're still, you know, kind of a beginner painter and trying to find your style, trying to figure out what um, what style you like best, one of these tutorials, these three nights, is a great way to kind of play around and test different styles and see what, see if you lean toward whimsical or glam or rustic or something in between. Um, uh, I really like to see how everybody else kind of changes it up once they watch these. We'll start to see lots of these um, pumpkins popping up like in our Painters Clubhouse feed and stuff like that. And in our free group and stuff where people share pictures of their projects. And so I'm excited about that. So all you Painters Clubhouse members, if you paint one of these, be sure and take a picture and share it inside of our Facebook group. Hi, Darla. Very hot in Texas. It is very hot in Kentucky, too. Um, it's not as dry as in, in Kentucky as it has been in Texas, but it is crazy hot and humid. <clears throat> humid here. I heard that South Texas is getting storms, actually, like hurricanes almost. So that's crazy. All right. We got a base coat on orange. We'll let that start drying. Marie says, yes, I love this week. It's always fun to watch what you come up with, with any new techniques you've learned. I always um, try to implement new techniques I've learned or just things that I want to try. Um, and so sometimes I kind of stumble across like a happy accident or something that I didn't even like intend to do. Um, so it'll be kind of fun to see how this turns out. Dolores says, getting my Hello Fall door hanger tomorrow. Can't wait to paint the pumpkins. Yes. What is your tray of paint called? This is a silicone ice cube tray, actually, and it comes with this cute little lid that you can pop on it and keep your paints fresh. So a lot of these paints are left over from um, last night's project. And if they get a little dry, I can just kind of mist them a little bit, keep them moist. Um, I know sometimes sitting here and painting underneath the fan, if I have the fan going, it gets dried out a little bit. <clears throat> Anna says, I came from TikTok. It was lagging terrible over there. Well, welcome to the Facebook side of things. Anna, glad you're here. <laughs> Be sure and hit that follow button in case you're hanging out on Facebook and want to watch me another time. I do paint live here every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Central. And then this is where my private Facebook group is for the Painters Clubhouse. 
So um, in the Painters Clubhouse, we actually have um, the community, which is the Facebook group where everybody hangs out. And it's a private group where you can um, post your projects. You can watch live videos and tutorials and you can engage with other clubhouse members. And then we also have what's called our member library. And that is where all of our videos live. And so like after I do a live tutorial in the Facebook group, we will upload it to the member area the member library and that's where the template will be also so as a member you can log in there you can download old templates watch videos whatever there's over a hundred probably actually 125 now tutorials in that member library that you can watch at any time lots of technique videos too that will teach you all kinds of great stuff this uh teal paint was getting kind of thin so i dipped my brush in the water I'm using a really large flat tip brush. That's why I'm able to like base coat so many of these pumpkins so quickly. And I like to turn it up on its tippy toes like this and kind of just pull it along the edge of something. So that white paint is still wet. I don't want to get mixed up in the middle of it, but I did want to kind of go down the side of it like that and fill it in. So we're going to get all of these base coated. These are the same colors that I used last night but then we're going to change up the style and make it more rustic here in a minute. <clears throat> the one I did last night's hanging up behind me. We did it um, in a whimsical way and we finished it off with like some patterns and some paint pens and things like that. What kind of rustic look would you guys like to see me do on this? Do you guys have any particular technique you're hoping to see me do? Give me your ideas. <laughs> Lisa said it's like painting Netflix. Exactly. That's what I think of when I think of the Painters Clubhouse member library. It's like door hanger Netflix. You can binge watch for days in there and still probably not see it all. <laughs> Where can I get this blank? Diane, um, it is at shopdoorhangers.com. Just type in triple fall. It'll come right up. Okay, Darla's hoping to see me do a distressed technique. Jane says, colors please. Canyon orange, light buttermilk, uh, bluegrass green so far. Hey, Lauren. Kristen's hoping to see some shiplap. I didn't even think about shiplap. What would you like me to do the shiplap on? Like the sign? Hmm, you've got me intrigued. <laughs> um... Okay, I think I caught up on the questions. Hey, Amber. Michelle said, I found you on TikTok last night. Such a cute design. I'm glad you came back for night number two. You mean you're not sick of me yet? Oh, hey, Lisa. I don't know if you're still on here, but I just saw your comment. So glad you popped in to say hi. It has been a long time. We need to catch up. Um, you got your Hello, hello Fall tonight. Looking forward to painting it. How do we print this smaller? Great question, Marie. So when you print out the template, yes, Kelly, there is a free digital template that you can download at the link up in the video description. Um, you can print this smaller in a couple of ways. So the template comes with different sizes, like 6, 8, 12, and 18 inches, I believe. And so let's say, for example, you wanted to paint this on a 16-inch size instead of an 18-inch you would just need to take the 18 inch template and print it at 80% scale instead of 100% scale. And it would print a little smaller. <laughs> the sign needs to be shiplap. Okay. Which direction would you do the shiplap? Would you do the boards going vertically or horizontally? I hadn't even thought about doing that. Oh, Teresa said maybe some cow print. What if we did cow print on this one, this little white one, but instead of doing black cow print, we could do like the brown cow print. I know I said we weren't going to change up the colors. This is not changing up the colors though, right? It's just changing up the patterns. I like that idea, Teresa. So smart. Um, okay. Amber says, I'm doing mine on a piece of wood that is slatted like a fence. I would love to see some deep shading and highlights. Hmm. Maybe. Oh, Katie joined the club last night. Welcome to PC sister. I thought about that, Dixie. I thought about doing the distressing kind of like I did on that picket fence design that we did in the clubhouse back in the spring. Okay, Tammy says horizontally. So does Samantha. <laughs> Anna is shouting from the rooftops. Cow print, please. <laughs> she wants cow print. Uh, sorry, TikTok. I can barely read y'all's comments. But yes, this is a uh, silicone ice cube tray that I'm using. Um... <laughs> 
<laughs> Lauren says, please do cow print. All right, all right, all right. Y'all convinced me. Let me go ahead and paint um, our uh, little, okay, follow-up question. Would you just still do ship, would you do wood ship lamp, like brown? on up here or are y'all talking about changing the color on this when you talk about shiplap on the sign i have follow-up questions but this is going to be a collaborative effort effort and you're going to help me decide i need follow-up answers here <laughs> okay i'm while you are answering me i'm going to jump to painting my stems with the dark chocolate brown So do y'all want realistic looking cow print or do you want like cartoony cow print? You know, like the real smooth cow print spots. Sorry, I'm asking too many questions, aren't I? <laughs> uh, yes, Beth, if you join Painters Clubhouse, you get 20% off of purchases at shopdoorhangers.com. That includes the templates and the wooden blanks. And you, um, that's every day. You get that discount every day. Okay, Donna says realistic cow print. So does Marie. So does Cassidy. <laughs> so does everybody else. <laughs> um, okay. Joanne says, I think the sign needs to be a lighter wood, like a tan color. Lighter brown, says Donna. Okay. So we're not thinking like white shiplap. Oh, wait, somebody said creamy shiplap. Hmm. Okay. We'll take a vote in just a minute. Let's uh, actually, let's take our vote now. That way I don't have to wait for the answer. So should I do shiplap in like a creamy, like off white, or should I do it in more of like a, what color is this? Fawn, which is just like a soft tan brown color. Or actually burlap's what we've been using. It's a little lighter even. We could kind of combine both of those. So cream or, or light brown. Take, cast your votes now. <laughs> I feel like we're on American Idol or something. Remember when we used to pull out our phones and we would text in our votes for Kelly Clarkson? <laughs> Those were the days. I used to watch all those, every episode. <laughs> okay, we got people changing their minds. They're saying light brown. I'm also seeing cream. <laughs> Lauren said, okay, I missed the beginning plan, but the cow print, I think, depends on the other pumpkins. All right, we're going to leave these two pumpkins, like, not patterned. We might do a little um, distressing around the edges of them. We're going to do cow print down here in brown. And then we're going to do some kind of shiplap up here, but I can't decide if it's going to be cream or, like, a tannish light brown. I remember David Cook, too, Donna. He was on American... Yeah, she's totally famous, famous Danica. She seems really down to earth, though. Hey, Kristen B. How's it going, girlfriend? Yes, we're talking about doing shiplap on our sign up here, and it was mentioned that maybe we could do it in like a light tan brown, or we could do it in like a creamy white. And so we were trying to decide between the two of those. And I don't know what I was drying just now, but I meant to be drying that stem up there, and I got distracted. And while we were deciding, I was painting our stems on our little pumpkins. Okay. <laughs> Anna said, fine, light brown, okay. I mean, it's such a toss-up. Like, looking at the comments, I don't even know who to go with. But Marie is agreeing with cream or light gray. I trust Marie's... Um, her, her instincts. She usually has really good color choices on her projects. So if this is a fail, we may have to brain blame Marie. Uh, <laughs> hey, Holly, what if we compromise here? What if we do the base coat in this, but do some distressing with this? And then we have like shiplap lines in the dark brown. Does that feel like a good compromise? <laughs> like we're using both and nobody's going to be upset that we didn't pick their color. <laughs> you can take it. Uh, 
I love collaborating with you guys. It's really fun to kind of, um, Anna says, ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. Awesome. I love kind of like collaborating with you guys because y'all really like challenge me to come up with stuff on the fly and try things that I might, I'm like, oh, I'm not sure how this is going to turn out. It's easy to do something on Facebook Live when I have pre-planned it out on Procreate app or something like that. And I'm like, I know that I'm going to like the colors together. But sometimes if I'm just completely winging it, I'm like praying it's going to turn out nice. And sometimes I'm really pleasantly surprised. All right. Second coat on that. That didn't take very long. We'll let that be drying while we base coat this. And I, why did I just rinse my brush? This is the same color that we're fixing to use. Um, okay. Kristen loves the idea for the shiplap. Great. Dixie says you could use crackle on the shiplap lines. I could, but I've never done crackle in my life. Dixie, what if I mess it up on a Facebook live? <laughs> and I don't know if I even have any crackle medium. I probably do around here, but who knows where it went. It makes me nervous to try <laughs> to try that, but that is a really cute idea. Crackle shiplap would be the cutest, cutest ever. Bobby says, I said last night that my September was going to be busy. You convinced me, though, that I should give it a try, and I did. I've been binge-watching tutorials all day. Yes, Bobby, I'm so excited for you. She said, I'm excited to practice some of your fun ideas. I'm so glad you didn't wait, and I know you will not be sorry. You're going to be so glad that you went ahead and jumped in and did it, because even if you only get to paint, like, one time in the month of September... You'll have, you'll still have, like, like you said, you binge watched all day today. And so you'll have all this knowledge for the, for when you do have time to sit down and paint because you will have just absorbed it by watching all these videos. I think it's going to be awesome. I'm so excited for you. What is crackle ship lap? Kristen, I don't think crackle ship lap's the thing, but I'm thinking we need to try, like, we might need to try it sometime. If I could find some crackle medium around here, but you guys may have to baby step me and walk me through crackle. Do I even have Elmer's glue, Lynette? I don't, I'm not, I don't know. We used to have a bunch of that kind of stuff around here, but when Charlie's around, things disappear because she gets to crafting and she packs things off. So who even knows? I'll, I'll have to look. If you guys will give me just a second and a minute after I get this on here, I will look and see if I have some crackle medium over here on the shelf. There's a good chance I might. I feel like way back, a long time ago, Deco Art sent me a box of random stuff to try and the crackle medium was in there, I feel like. All right, for those of you who are at home who are brand new to this and are like, why did she just paint right over those words? Don't worry. These are lasered etched into the wood and I can still see the words happy fall through all this paint. We're good. And I put a lot of paint on here, so I'm like struggling to like smooth it out. Okay, let me show y'all. Do you see that you can still see the words? Yeah. When it dries, you'll be able to see them better. <laughs> Who else remembers the candy cane paint pour? If you're still here after the candy cane paint pour trials, then you are a diehard fan because that was the epic fail of all fail projects. And at the end of it, I stepped back from my craft table and I'm like, this is like a crime scene candy cane. It looked horrible. I, I don't even know if we have it around here. I think I threw it in the trash. It was so bad. But I might have kept it somewhere just for laughs. I can't remember where it's even at. But if you guys were here, somebody said I was just typing this. Were you, were you here for that too, Lisa? Oh, my goodness. It was so bad. Okay. Somebody said I need to base coat a darker color, though. Oh. Hmm. You can use Vaseline. What? <laughs> Peggy said, I'm hearing two audios going on at the same time. You shouldn't be. I've only got one microphone turned on. Somebody said worn out shiplap. Yeah, that would be good. Aw, thank you, Amber. I appreciate you. Can we use split payments when purchasing for an SA Live virtual ticket? I don't think so, Jessica. I don't think it, they have it set up for that. Um, but I think PayPal or certain things like that allow you to split things up into payments sometimes. You could check about that. Base coat dark, crackle light. Well, why didn't we say this before I base coated it with white? <laughs> we might have to do the crackle another day. We do have a crack. Okay, for those of you who are like, I wish I could do crackle. I've never done crackle before. We do have a crackle tutorial on a pumpkin 
in the painter's clubhouse that uh, somebody taught a while back. And so you could totally come and watch that. That poor candy cane. Uh, I agree, Kristen. It was really bad. Okay. We're going to do some ship lap up there where we're going to do the cow print down here. We can go ahead and do the cow print. Let's finish drying this because it's almost dry. Um, and what do I need for this? It's been a second since I did the cow print. I'm trying to remember what kind of brush I, I taught it. I taught it in a tutorial and now I'm like, what kind of brush did I use? I think it was a flat tip brush. Who watched the tutorial? Who remembers? I've only ever done it like once. Do a dark layer and then sand the devil out of it. <laughs> yes, I am from Kentucky. Can you hear my accent? <laughs> Is it coming through loud and clear? No, I'm not a Georgia peach. I'm a Kentuckian. I'm from West Kentucky, not East Kentucky. They're a different kind of Kentucky. <laughs> They're, they don't sound Southern like us. They sound Northern, I think. Uh, hey, Marilyn, I feel like I haven't seen you on here in forever. So glad you're here. Um, hey, uh, somebody said laser slice. It's been a while since I caught you live. You know what? It's been a minute since I've been live on TikTok and I didn't like I kind of forgot that I could do TikTok live and then out of the blue, I kind of remembered it. Somebody said, wasn't a chip brush sideways? Was it? I don't remember. Well, this little brush looks like a good one. Look how scratchy that is. See the tips of it? It's real like frayed and scratchy. Look. You know what? This is what you do when you're problem solving. You put it aside and you get a piece of scrap paper or something, which I thought I had some in the trash down there. Hold up. You get some scrap paper and you practice on the scrap paper. That way, if what you, um, if what you try doesn't work, you'll know. Okay. So we got scrap paper here. I'm going to put a little bit on the ends of this real scraggly brush. And then you just kind of, kind of do like little wisps. I think this is going to work. See how this is what you want. You want like those really wispy scraggly edges. Okay. I feel confident now moving forward. <laughs> Lisa said it's a scruffy brush. Thank you. Okay, this is the dark chocolate color, the real dark one. And we're just going to put, we're going to start right in the middle of our pumpkin. And I'm just barely letting this brush touch. Just kind of letting it skim on, skim off. Keep a baby wipe handy because if you um, go too high and end up getting it like, up here on this area, you'll want to wipe it off real quick. If you want to know more about this cowhide technique, like in depth there, um, I've got one, I think it's for sale on my, <clears throat> on my website, but our painters clubhouse members, a lot of them got it recently. I don't know if, if it's uh, permanently in our library or not. I don't think it is but you can kind of learn by watching here also. Okay, let's do a little bit over here on the edge. The thing is, is it's like you don't want it to look too perfect. You don't want it to look like perfect little diamonds. So it's like I'm trying to spread it out a little and give it just a little bit more organic Facing. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Does anybody know what they're doing? <laughs> Didn't I use a chip brush? I don't think it was a great big chip brush, but this is a much smaller area too. So I don't want to use a chip brush on this because it would be too big on this little, this little area. Let's do some coming up from the bottom here. That looks pretty. Now we'll do some kind of coming down here, filling in through there. Y'all are really testing me today. I, I don't like, uh, it's been a minute since I did some cow print. I'm having to like remember how I did it. Okay, how, how's that looking? It looks a little wily right through there. 
Okay, I'm gonna kind of dab this brush off and I'm gonna pick up just a teensy bit of black and dab it off because I don't want a whole lot, just a little bit, a little bit of black. That's too much. Dab a little bit off. I just want little tiny spots of black kind of coming up. Oh, good, you're here. Charlie's here. Hi, Hi. dear. I'm thirsty and I left my drink in the other room. That's all you need. <laughs> I was really hoping you would make an appearance at some point so I could ask you to bring me my drink. That's my daughter. She's Where eight. Check the living room. Okay, so this cow print may be starting to look like a little bit of like cow doo doo. <laughs> but I am going to tr totally take my own advice here and trust the process because. So that's I know that at the end of this, we're going to antique glaze the whole thing and it will hide a world of boo-boos. So okay. that's all you needed me for. Well, and this. <laughs> and to say hi to everybody. Hello. Oh, uh, by the way. What? Can you set a timer on my Alexa so like I could play well, on my Kindle? Technically it is bedtime. I know, but I want to play on my Kindle. Well, Just tell Alexa to, to set a 15 minute timer then. Okay. And I'm then you need you. to get her to bed. I love you too. <laughs> no, it's not sweet tea. It's lemonade. <laughs> oh, she is such a sweetheart. Yes, she is. That's all you needed me for. She's such a sassy little butt too. Um, so I let it slip to her last night that I was going to let her teach. This is not nearly as good as the cow print that I taught in that tutorial, just for the record. Um, I let it slip that I was going to um, let her teach like a kids tutorial to the painters clubhouse kids, like for y'all's kids and grandkids that are in the clubhouse. We don't have a clubhouse kids, but I'm just saying for you guys who have kids and want to hop on a zoom with Charlie, she's going to teach a tutorial one day in September. And I told her that last night. Well, apparently she's been bragging to everybody that will listen today. I'm going to teach a painting tutorial, just like my mama does to all the clubhouse kids soon. And <laughs> she said that to like the receptionist at the doctor's office today. And she said, what? <laughs> she didn't know what she was talking about. So I had to give some context. <laughs> it's a cow patty, not cow doo doo. Yes, you're exactly right, Mickey Cates. <laughs> uh, yes, April, you can join right now. We actually have a promo going on. If you join between now and Friday night, you get this bonus template and four videos showing you four different ways to paint it. So go ahead and join at paintersclubhouse.com right now. And you can actually get this template for free as well in the video description. Oh, good. Becca's excited to paint with Charlie. I can't, I need to go ahead and pick a date that way before our September calendar comes out, I'll have a date picked. Did I post a list of supplies last night? I did not, Leanne. Um, we're going to be posting that soon. I've got to get the list to my team so they can put it together. So if you want to get the book, bookmark the page where we put the supply list, text list to this number and it'll send that page to you. <laughs> okay. Uh, while y'all are doing that. Let me look, take an assessment here. Our colors look good. I don't think we're going to need a second coat on any of this. I think we need to go ahead and do our distressing on um, our sign up here. And like I promised, we're going to use the light tan colors. This is burlap. I'm going to do a little paint worm on my lid of my silicone ice cube tray. And then I'm also going to use this fawn color. It's just a hair darker than the... Actually, that's not going to look any different now that I squirted it out there. Let's do a little bit of sable brown, maybe just a tiny bit. Tiny bit. The reason I do it in a worm shape is because it's about the width of my chip brush, and you don't need very much paint. And I don't ever want to, like, have to dip it in, like, a puddle of paint. So I put the worm out on a flat surface, and uh, I dip in it. So let's start with this burlap, and I'm going to dip just the very tippy toes of that brush in that burlap. Y'all get out of the way. These paint bottles are... That's not going to work. I was going to put that in my mouth, and I realized my mouth's not big enough to hold that paintbrush handle. i got to move some of this stuff out of the way, or I'm going to knock everything down. You would think this huge table, I'd have enough space, but I, I like everything right here close to me. Okay. I can't see your comments. Where'd you go? Uh, hey, Anna. She said, so nice to meet you. Getting ready for school comes early. Good night. Glad you're here. Um, okay, so we're going to just drag this on. And this color is a really good one to use for distressing on top of this light buttermilk color because it's super subtle. It's not like 
really bold. You know, it's going to look really good. Okay, and I may have to like let some of it scrape over onto our little um, <clears throat> stems. I can't use words for some reason so that it doesn't look weird. Okay, now I'm picking up the slightly darker color. This is the one that has a little bit of sable brown in it. Let a little bit of that come onto the board. I don't want to like completely darken up the sign too much. So I'm kind of just like scraping. Let's do a little bit more along the tops too, like right here. Yeah, I like that. A little bit on these edges. You can also turn it up on its tippy toes like this and just kind of do the scraping motion. Okay, we got it distressed. Um, I was trying to think. I also kind of thought about doing some distressing around the edges of our pumpkins, but I think I was going to do that with this dark chocolate color. So let's do that real quick before we wash our chip brush out. <clears throat> so this is dark chocolate. It's the darkest of the browns. And I'm just going to kind of take this and just flick it over the edges of our pumpkins. So kind of build it up a little bit. Start with a little and then build on it some more if you want more. Just depends on how rustic you want to get with it. And I accidentally got a little bit around the edge of that, but I think it'll be okay. Told y'all we were going full on rustic with this project. So it's definitely going to be, let's do some around the edge of this pumpkin to, to kind of mask the weird cow print we got going on. <laughs> now it's going to be a little tricky going around the edge of this pumpkin. I may have to like, oh, that does not look good. <laughs> it's okay. We'll clean it up. Y'all may learn a thing or two not, as I goof up. How to fix things. All right, and I think I want to do a little bit through the center, kind of drag it in the direction that the pumpkin design goes. Okay. This is gonna be cute. Just hold in, hold on for just a minute. <laughs> it's gonna be cute. You gotta trust the process. How do you distress on a round door round? You just keep going all the way around. Like it doesn't have to be like a flat edge. Just like this is rounded. See how we just kept going around the edge? Whoops. I accidentally got my finger in it. <clears throat> yes, twine and raffia would be so cute on these. Uh Chris, I just rinse them in warm soapy water. Uh, what if you did chevron and a lighter turquoise? That would be a great idea to use on the one we did last night. We did diamonds, but you could have done it on that other pumpkin. The chevron is more of a whimsical pattern, so I feel like it doesn't really go as much with our rustic theme here. Okay, we're going to rotate it this way. And I need a ruler. Let me grab my ruler. I, I put it up after last night because I thought we were done with it. But then y'all requested ship lap, so we have to pull it back out again and I need a brown marker are these me yes these are medium tip markers I'm gonna try this I don't know if I like this or not if we don't we'll use a round tip brush <laughs> it's having a primitive look yeah totally that's what I was going for tonight last night was whimsical Tonight is going to be primitive, rustic. Tomorrow night is going to be glam. So uh, what is your overall style? Let's take a poll right now real quick. What is your kind of like, what kind of style do you generally do? Do you usually go whimsical, rustic, glam, or something else? Um, April, you may need to sign in and then go try to sign up. <laughs> Does that make sense? Like you may need to sign in before you can register. Okay, so this is a brown paint pen from Artistro. I'm hoping this will make really good little shiplap lines. I'm not going to do a whole lot of lines. We may do like one kind of going across the middle here, and that's not going to be dark enough, is it? Look how light that was. That I don't know if that's dark enough. I feel like we might need to just use a 
round tip brush, and some dark chocolate paint. Okay, I'm getting a liner brush. It's this really pointy, long brush that's going to hold lots of paint. It's great for doing long lines. And I'm just going to put that back where I had it since my paint pen wasn't dark enough. And I'm going to use my ruler as my guide and just pull down through there. I'm also, notice how I'm leaning back in my chair. Whoops, my line got crooked. My line got a little crooked right there. Get a little bit more paint. It's okay. Shiplap is imper imperfect. All right. Let's put that away. I'm going to darken it, thicken it up in a few spots. Okay, there's one shiplap line. Let's do another one. Maybe like right here. That line got a little bumpy, but I kind of like the way it looks. It's kind of um, imperfect on accident. Okay. Shiplap lines. We need another one kind of part way down here. Instead of using my ruler, I'm just going to put it in there like that. What do y'all think? Do y'all like the, the shiplap? That was y'all's idea. What do you think? <laughs> oh, you think it is dark enough? Sorry, I didn't even see those comments. I like the darker, though, I think. Nancy says her style is eclectic. <laughs> That's probably best describing mine, too, because I jump from thing to thing. I don't I haven't ever, like, stuck with one. I do lean whimsical a lot, but I enjoy trying all of them. Marina says whimsical. Cynthia says rustic or whimsical. Lots of rustics, lots of whimsical. Ooh, boho. That's a fun, fun style. Cassie says, I like them all. It's hard to choose. I agree. I want to try them all. Okay. Robin says, when and how did you realize this was your niche? Great question, Robin. Um, I did something called Pinterest parties for several years in my home where I would invite women over to come and craft with me. And um, they were all like friends from church or whatever. And just people I knew. And I did that a lot while my husband was deployed or in the military. And so <clears throat> that kind of occupied my time. And two or three times during those craft nights, we did door hangers. And the door hangers usually tended to be my favorites. Well, after I quit doing the paint parties, it was a while later, somebody said, would you do a, um, like a door hanger paint party for me? And I had seen where other people had kind of done some door hanger paint parties in towns that were like an hour and a half from me. And so I decided to give it a shot. Next thing you know, it kind of became a whole business. And about an hour, about an hour, about a year and a half into it or so, Facebook Live became a thing. So I started trying that out. Uh, the teacher, like Lauren said, she's a boring creative teacher. It just started flowing out of me. I just started answering questions and teaching as I was talking. And it just felt very natural. And I noticed it filled my cup, too, to kind of do that. And so um, that was kind of how it all began. Okay, we're not done. We're not done. Okay, something that we're going to do next. Okay, hang on. I got to think about this. We're going to do the the distressing or the, the antiquing glaze. Well, I mentioned that at the beginning. Glaze looks like this. It's called a glazing medium. It's from DecoArt, and you can mix it with any color of paint. So I will probably mix it with a brown color, and we're going to kind of like put it over the entire thing, and you're going to think that I really royally screwed it up. But then we're going to wipe it all off with paper towels. So let's prepare by grabbing some paper towels, because you want to wipe it off pretty quickly after you put it on. So I'm going to go ahead and pull off like three or four paper towels here. Three or four half sheets, rather. I brought the whole roll of paper towels in my craft room today. I don't normally do that. But with this project, I was like, I'm probably going to need those. Okay. So we got those on standby. What's next? I need to mix my antiquing glaze. You also need to make sure your project is completely dry. It feels like it is. 
and then we're going to mix our glazing medium. So I think the color that I want to use is probably, let me look real quick what I got here. I'm like, do I want to use the browns that I've been using? Maybe I want to use this. That really just doesn't feel dark enough, but I could use the sable brown. I've also got, no, nah, I don't know. I think we might just kind of use like a combo of the sable brown and the dark chocolate. So since I've already got a bunch of sable brown right here, I keep freezing. Sorry, guys. Everybody's using the internet tonight, apparently, in our house. So hopefully, um, if you guys on TikTok want to watch a better feed, come to Facebook or YouTube. This will also be completely recorded so you can watch the entire thing from a top-down viewpoint on YouTube and Facebook. So you might want to just watch there or watch the replay there. All right. So I added my glazing medium. We're going to need more than that. I added my glazing medium to my sable brown paint. I never really follow the instructions, but it says on here, shake well, mix. I didn't really remember to shake it either. Uh, mix with water one-to-one. -one. I never add water. I guess you're supposed to thin it out. Told y'all I never read the instructions. Then add it up to 35% acrylic paint. All right, so I guess we're supposed to add a little bit of water to this. I'm going to just use my little mister bottle squirt some in there. I guess that just kind of thins it out a little. Probably would make it go a whole lot farther. Okay. My comments have quit scrolling. <laughs> there they are. Chel Kelsey says, I found you yesterday. I'm already obsessed. Thinking about signing up. Do it, Kelsey. Come join us. It's the funnest place on Facebook. On the internet, really. I mean, they probably not, but <laughs> we think it is. It depends on who you ask. Okay. So this made a really watery glaze it's okay uh the glazing medium kind of like lets it stick to the door hanger but not stick all the way so it's kind of like staining wood we're gonna wipe it on and wipe it off okay cynthia says it makes a wash when you add water some of you guys who know what you're talking about are probably like what is she even saying because <laughs> some of this i do make up as i go along okay we're gonna get our ginormous flat tip brush that i was using earlier and I think I'm going to start from the top down and work in small sections so you can see how this goes. So I'm going to dip in the paint and we're just going to kind of cover this whole area. And while I'm doing this, I'm kind of like wondering if I even got this dark enough. So I don't think I did. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't look as dark as I want it to be. So I'm just going to on the fly, add some dark chocolate to it, make it a little darker. Notice how I'm always stirring with the bottom of my paintbrush. You don't want to get paint all up in the bristles of your brush. Makes a mess. Okay, darken it up just a little bit more. That's a little better. Okay, it kind of feels like we're messing it up, don't it? So don't panic when you do this. And if you're nervous to do it, just work in a small area. And keep a baby wipe handy in case you like have a hard time getting it off or whatever. Okay. There's one area. Let me set this down somewhere it ain't going to roll away. We're going to get our paper towel, fold it up into a little square, and we're going to start wiping it off. It's not taking as much as I want, so I'm going to get a little water on my paper towel. Actually, why did I do that when I've got my little mister bottle? The water kind of thins it out a little. It's like you want to leave a little behind, but you don't want to leave it all behind. New paper towel. That was kind of going away too quickly. But do you see why I prefer to do a small area? Little Mr. Bottles coming in so handy. Okay. Now let's do our pumpkins. I think I want to go a little darker too. Like I, I, It looks good on that, but I feel like I want it to be just a hair darker. Maybe even a tiny, well, no, I don't want to go overboard. I want to go overboard. I was going to add some black, and then I'm like, what if that was a mistake? I just added a little bit more dark chocolate to it. I think I need to add a little more water to it, too. It feels thicker now that I've added paint. <laughs> Johnny says, just got home from church, so I'll go back to see what I missed. Yes, um, I hopped on immediately after I got home from church, too. 
And Brenda says, I don't read the directions either. Cynthia says, we use it a lot on ceramics. Yes, my lady who teaches ceramics uses it a lot too. And she was kind of talking about it earlier today. Um, and yeah, I don't use it enough to really know a lot about it, but I really have loved it every time I have done it. Okay, here we go. We're going to do the whole rest of the pumpkins. I did this the most recent time I think I did this. We did it like a couple of um, seasons ago on a project in the fall where it was a, a red tractor and we did splatter paint on the tractor. Um, and then we it had pumpkins on the hood of the tractor. That's a Painters Clubhouse project. So if you love tractors, go check that out. And then we took um, the antiquing glaze and antiqued it and it gave the whole thing like a really cool look. Okay, now we just scrape it off. Let me fold my paper towel up. New paper towel. Told y'all we'd need them. Ooh, I really like it. I like it a lot. I feel like it's too much on this little this little guy right here. So I'm gonna spray it with water. And take more off of that but I like I like the extra on the on the teal pumpkin I don't want to take too much off just a little, a little bit more what do y'all think is this freaking y'all out or do you think it's totally awesome like I do spritzing it with water anytime I see a spot that I want to take more off of like this little edge of this right here it looks still looks too dark Now it kind of looks super rustic, like cowboy rustic. And I accidentally took too much off right there. So let me get my paintbrush, dip it in that glazing medium. We'll just put it back on. Wipe on, wipe off. Hold on, I'm not reading comments yet. I promise I will. You could also kind of do this really cute, like really cute, really cool like dabbing motion and it kind of gives it like a texture. Okay, looks a little messy right up there. I accidentally got it up, up on the sign. I like it. I like it. It's kind of messy, but I love it. It definitely looks um, more like old-fashioned. Look, the pumpkin almost looks dirty, so let's take a little bit more off that pumpkin. I need a new paper towel. Like, I like how it looks on the orange pumpkin, but I think I went a little too heavy on my teal pumpkin for my taste. I'm going to take a little bit more off. Brighten it up just a little bit. It's pretty forgiving, I feel like. Like, you can just keep messing with it until you get it looking the way you want it. There we go. That brightened it up quite a bit. Okay. Delane said, when you first started glazing the whole thing, I was like, OMG. But now that you're finished, I love it. I told you. I told you some few guys. Yeah, like a sepia filter. Exactly. I told you guys that some of you guys would be like, well, what is she doing? Like, she's covering the whole thing in brown. But it looks super cool. Like, it gives the color a lot of, like, depth. Can y'all see that? Like, it gives it more depth. And like I accidentally got some stuck down here, but it's kind of like a happy accident. I feel like it looks almost like a patina. <laughs> Dixie said she's the Mr. Miyagi of door hangers. Uh, no, Jessica, it's just regular tap water in my spritzer. Okay, let's jump to doing painting our lettering on here real quick. Uh, what brush did I use for this last night? It was this little filbert tip brush. Filbert tip brushes kind of have like a little bit of a curved edge on the end. Instead of being like flat tip, it almost looks like the end of your finger. And so, sorry, my nails aren't pretty today. <laughs> it's time for new nails. Let's get some black paint. And we're just going to start doing filling in our letters. You could also do these letters with um, a paint pen. If you're intimidated using a brush, I just prefer a brush because for me it feels so much faster. 
But while I'm doing this, what questions do you all have about the Painters Clubhouse? We have lots of PC sisters in the comments right now who I'm sure would be happy to help me answer your questions or set your mind at ease if you're sitting on the fence a little bit and trying to decide whether or not to join the clubhouse. Um, we are a group who has been together. A lot of us have been together all the way since 2018. We teach door hanger painting. Every Hi, dear. We do, my foot. we do two new projects every month. Oh, I didn't even show y'all what projects we're doing next month. Do y'all want to see? This? Is it this? No, it's not that. Hang on. Let me bring it up here. So next month... We're going to be doing uh, the Boo Babe, which is this cute little, sorry, TikTok, y'all can't see it because it's up on the screen on my computer. It's like a cutesy ghost. She's got a little bandana with little, what, bow, a bow on it. Can you show them like, the computer? And she's got like a little smoochy lips and cute little eyes with eyelashes. And then she's holding a banner. And on the banner are three triangle pennants that say Boo, B-O-O, -O, in cute little colors. Her bandana's purple. Her body is white. Uh, project number two is a napkin art project with Miss Tracy Pounds from Miss Tracy Create. She's going to teach us how to Mod Podge uh, napkins on each side of a little six inch pumpkin to create like a little shelf sitter. And so one side's going to have a Halloween design. The other side's going to have a um, fall design. Just a minute. Let me finish. Uh, project number three is going to be a little bit more challenging. It's a haunted house design with like a moon in the background and, and a spooky like tree. And it's inside of a creepy looking snow globe. What are you doing, See, darling? Like stop, stop. I, pressed on. I don't need you clicking buttons. I you. <laughs> Charlie's showing y'all stuff she ain't supposed to be showing y'all. <laughs> but anyway, um, well, do you need something? I feel like I was on a roll there and you're just totally derailing train. By, by the way, um, I am ready for bed. And okay. And, like, what is it going to be tomorrow? Um, Shirt day, like, banding. What was oh, it? Oh, wait. It was, we have to wear yellow. Yeah, tomorrow you're supposed to wear yellow. Cause I, cause we're Don't you just love spirit weeks at school? Because we're, like, si silver snakes. Okay. So. so go pick out something yellow to wear, and I should be done here pretty soon. Well, I'll see y'all in a few minutes. <laughs> hi. Uh, Laura said hi, Charlie. Marie said, I haven't tried this yet. Now I want to try it on all things. I bet you'll be adding it to something quickly. Like, it's it's such a fun tutorial. Like, a fun technique, I mean. Amber says, lettering is the harder part for me. I shake too much. Does the paint pen help at all? Jenny says, Painters Clubhouse is awesome. You love the snow globe. Do the napkins come in a kit? So, Lori, yeah, if you end up buying the companion kit, the first hundred people will get the napkins with it. Miss Tracy is providing napkins for the first hundred that buy. <laughs> Jenny says, I love how we can buy the blanks and have those shipped in the clubhouse. Yes. And y'all save 20% off of your orders. Can I wear this on the bus? Yes. Um, yeah. Be sure and wear some little shorts underneath it. Oh, yeah, I'm wearing these shirts. And then um, we also have coupon codes, our discount codes for our Clubhouse members to the DecoArt website. So if you like to shop for paint on DecoArt.com, you can save an additional 30% twice a month. You can use your coupon. I think that's the limit is only two times a month, but it saves you 30% on each purchase. Laura said, I remember watching videos of you painting and Charlie was still in diapers. I know it feels like that wasn't very long ago. Oh, she's in third grade now. <laughs> will the companion, when will the companion packs available right now, Delane? I actually announced about it on Tuesday. Um, it should be pinned up in the featured tab of the Painters Clubhouse Facebook group. You can go order it there. Um, and we will be shipping those August 31st. We're holding the ship date just a little bit this time for all of our new members. When can we buy the companion pet? Right now. <laughs> Is the glazing medium in Hobby Lobby or Michael's? I don't know. I ordered mine on DecoArt's website. Okay. We got our lettering done. Looks super great on that light background. Great job, guys, suggesting that. Isn't it funny how we used that light color, but then after we distressed it, it definitely deepened it and darkened the color to a more rustic cowboy sort of look. 
I'm going to use a round tip paintbrush. Let me pick one here. And then we're going to do our details, like our outlines and things, with a paintbrush instead of our paint pens because I want to kind of show how somebody can go through the progression of learning new things in the clubhouse and I think it will kind of go a little bit more with the look of this rustic door hanger. So I'm going to kind of make these lines a little more imperfect on purpose, make them where they don't perfectly meet up on the edges or something like that. Um, and I'm just taking this little round tip brush and dragging it along the edges to kind of finish up that shape trailing it off a little bit. Let's do some up here on our stems. Can I do one, like something for you? What do you mean? Do like part of the lines? No, just like some, like something. <laughs> she wants to I do like help. something. Okay, so let me show you how to do it. You load your brush up, kind of mm -hmm. twist it in the paint a little bit. I want to sit up. Okay, in a minute, I'll get up and I'll let you sit here and do it, okay? I'll let you do this little pumpkin. How about that? Now look, do you see that where the lines are on the thumpkin? Yeah. There's a do line I trace right here. That with the black. Yeah, but you kind of have to pull the brush like this all the way along the line. Okay. So I'm gonna do this big pumpkin, and then I'll get up and I'll let you do this little this no, little cow print. No, can I do like both of these? We'll see. We'll see how well you do on the cow print pumpkin. And then if you do pretty good, then I'll let you do the teal one too. I can't wait to see how it turns out. I like how you put the black lines always well well sometimes always but because like it makes the the door hanger stand out the most yeah uh, it does and i like using the brush sometimes because it lets you kind of like do like a little swipe and it has more of that like trailing off sort of look and it looks a little less perfect i kind of like that way that look about it all right i'm gonna get up and let you do it do you see how i did that little swirly at the top of the yeah. pumpkin can you do one of those on this yeah sure all right, they're cheering for you. Lisa says, go for it, Charlie. Yay. Are you close enough or do you need me to scoot you up? No, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. I Hang on, don't it. start yet because I'm going to bump you. I'm going to move over here <laughs> so I can read comments. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if I'm going to touch the paint. Uh, Laura said, you're the reason I started painting on Procreate. Yes, I do have a Procreate course for those of you guys who are interested um, marker recommendations. Amber, I really like the Artistro markers. I also really love Posca, P-O-S-C-A, like this, this brand here. Uh, those are really good, but I also love Artistro. Wendy wants to try the cow print. The cow print looks pretty. Like, I like it. Uh, Lori, if you're talking about this fall door hanger that's hanging up back here, yes, we have started shipping those already. So yours may be on the way. I like it, Mom. I do. Yep. It looks just like this. Yep. Ooh. She's outlining her pumpkin. When will, where can I find the, oh, I already answered that question. Sorry. You can find the companion pack in the Painters Clubhouse, Delane. It's uh, up in the featured tab. Marina says she loves hearing Charlie. She is the same age as my granddaughter and they sound the same. She thinks your voice sounds like her granddaughter's. Well, what's her name? Like, what's the granddaughter's name? What's her granddaughter's name? name? I don't know yet. They're all telling you you're doing a really good good job. And now I'm going to do this for <laughs> uh, like, Brenda, I wouldn't have it any other way. Okay, <laughs> I'm about to do this swirl. You're going to do the swirl? All right. Like that? That's perfect, yeah. yeah. Now do little lines kind of going down the side of it, too. Oh. Adeline. That is a beautiful name, Marina. Adeline. 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 It sounds like Adeline. It does, yeah. But I kind of like it. Right I kind of like how it goes fast. It's like Adeline. <laughs> ah! I'm training her well, aren't I, Robin? <laughs> training her up so that she can take over my job one of these days. And, and no, like uh, in a few weeks. Somebody because... on TikTok said, do you sell these already painted? No, I only teach painting, but there are lots of people in my community who you could buy one painted from. Definitely. Lots of times we will post like a door hanger of the day over on our Facebook page. And lots of those ladies are from our community and many of them do sell their projects. By the way, um, I'm going to take over like for one day in a few, in a few weeks because I'm going to teach some I kids. I was telling them that earlier. You're going to teach the, the clubhouse kids a project. Yeah. You did a really good job on that. Can I do this one? 
<sighs> I kind of want to do it myself, though. Can I do it? Yeah, but I want to do it. <laughs> and it's really, it is, look, it is 35 minutes past your bedtime. Uh -huh. I think you need to go get in the bed because I've still got to talk to them a little bit about something. Can I do this, though? Let me finish it up. I think you need to go get in bed. It is, you were supposed to go to bed at 9 o'clock. It's now 9.30. Bye-bye. <laughs> All right, tell me good night. Wait, I want you to tuck me in. I can't come tuck you in. I've got to stay here with these folks on Facebook. After? I will come tell you goodnight after, but you need to tell Daddy to, to go ahead and tuck you in right now, and then I'll come love on you after I get done. Mm. I know, I know. It's just during workshop week, I promise. Or not workshop week, during lunch week. <laughs> She's not used to me being in here at night on live. Uh, she did a pretty good job on this little pumpkin right here. Um, I'm going to kind of like clean up a couple of the lines a little bit and make them match sort of some of these others and make them like trail just a little bit more, you know, like that more smooth kind of like they're coming up and swooping up into the pumpkin but then I, I think the rest of it actually looks really good so i'm going to kind of go down through here and do this but i knew after the tutorial ended i want to stay on and answer any questions any of you guys have about the clubhouse something else that i realized i was live last night and something that i mentioned last night was that i had done a tour of the inside of the membership area of the clubhouse on live and i guess thinking about it tonight i didn't do that over here on my facebook page i did that in um our henrietta workshop so there were some of you guys who haven't even gotten to see that yet so would it help be beneficial would you guys like it if i went live tomorrow like 10 a.m or something and gave y'all like a little quick tour of the clubhouse um so you could see what's in the membership area I'm going to add some little highlights with our, uh, what is this color? The anti, the buttermilk white, just using that same round tip brush. I rinsed it out and I'm kind of just quickly dry brushing a little bit of this white on there to kind of give these letters just a little bit of pop. Yes, please. Okay, good. I'll go live tomorrow at 10 um, and give you guys kind of like a little tour so you can see kind of what it's like in the clubhouse. And um, maybe that'll help you decide if you're sitting on the fence. I'm just adding some little highlights and things. I don't want to add too many because this is a rustic door hanger and I want it to kind of still feel rustic. But sometimes rustic door hangers do look a little bit darker, and so I didn't want it to be too dark. So I was adding a little bit of this to kind of highlight it a little bit. All right, what do you think? Do you like the rustic look? It's completely different from our whimsical look that we did last night, which is hanging up behind me. This is the rustic look. Let me show you up close just how rustic this little pumpkin is, our cow print. Like I told y'all, my cow print. <laughs> I have done much better cow print in the past. This was a little bit of rough, rough go of it, but I think all of the rustic elements kind of helped hide my imperfect cow print. So it's, it's the overall look that matters. Um, would you prefer to cut your templates from MDF or plywood? I always used to cut them by hand from plywood, but that was because I couldn't find MDF in our area. I will warn you, if you're going to use MDF, you must use face and eye protection and all of that. I mean, especially like for your breathing, because MDF, like when it goes airborne, like dust particles can get in your lungs and cause uh, respiratory problems. So I don't want that for you. But the MDF does cut like butter <laughs> compared to um, other things where you're cutting across a wood grain. Um, Chris, to hang this up, you're just going to take um, some jute string, tie a knot in each end, and then just staple it to the back. That's the easiest Easiest way to do it. Where can we buy the glaze? Uh, Deco Arts website or probably at your local Hobby Lobby or something. I don't really know. Julie says, I love this version. Thank you. Irene likes the rustic more than whimsical. Tomorrow night's going to be glam. So you got to come back tomorrow night at 7 p.m. Central. We're going to do um, this one one more time and paint it in a glam fashion. And then Friday night, we're going to get together and do... Just a real casual painter's clubhouse um, 
chat. I'm going to be talking with three of our clubhouse members and answering all of your questions. We usually get to talking about business, craft fairs, answering questions about stuff like that. So if you're interested in doing this for a business, it is a great way to kind of offset your membership cost and your cost of all your supplies and kind of make some extra money for your family. So come and bring your business questions because all three of these ladies do door hanger businesses. Uh, Jerry, yeah, we actually do have a video painting this scarecrow inside the Painter's Clubhouse. We have two videos. So there's two versions of this scarecrow inside the Painter's Clubhouse. So once you join, go to the fall category and you'll find him there. Yes, the Hello Fall design is still available. That's the one y'all see hanging up behind me here. It's at shopdoorhangers.com. It's uh, the new 3D design that we just released. I painted it live this past Tuesday. Look at the grass down there below. This one was really fun to paint, you guys. So all those pieces, the letters and all that are all 3D. The fence is 3D. The leaves are 3D. Um, it's really, it's a really high quality piece. It feels really nice when you pick it up. It's like a, it's got lots of elements to it, but it's not like too heavy for your door. I hung that up totally crooked, didn't I? There we go. Um... That's okay, Leanne. We'll say we'll uh, keep the recording for you. Kenzie, Friday night is the deadline in order to get the bonus. So the bonus that we've got right now is this uh, fall pumpkin, whoops, fall pumpkin template and five, four different videos showing you four ways to paint it. And so if you want to get that bonus, you just need to sign up by Friday night. Other questions. Does Painters Club Clubhouse include the blank? No, um, it actually includes all of the templates that go along with our projects. And we do that to keep it more affordable for everybody so that they can cut out as many pieces as they want. Because if this were a subscription or if this were a membership where we included the blanks, we would have to charge a lot more every month for it. And so by making it a, a subscription where you get the templates, you have the option of tracing it on your wood, cutting it out yourself, if you have your own laser machine, you can plug those SVG files into your laser machine and cut it yourself. If you prefer to purchase the wood blanks from us, we do have a 20% off discount code you can use to get your blanks. Um, we also have something called a companion pack. And so the companion pack comes with the wood blanks that we're going to use that month for the project. So we have just released our most recent, the September companion pack. And you guys can buy that. It's at a 20% discount so that... Um, you have two options. So there's like the basic that comes with one door hanger and like a little side project. And then the option two comes with two door hangers and the side project. And the, and the side project, it's that cute little pumpkin with the napkins. So that is an additional cost, but it's totally optional. Uh, do you have a, oh, I already answered that question, didn't I? Sorry. <laughs> Where do you find the large sheets of MDF? Sharon, I usually have to special order them through my local lumber yard. And I usually have to buy them in bulk like a lot yeah you can cut mdf with a scroll saw you have a favorite wood glue um yeah so i think on this most recent one i used stick fast and it's not in here did charlie pack it off yeah it's gone i don't know where <laughs> i don't know where she must have been working on a project today but it's called stick fast and it is linked in my amazon favorites vicky um I taught Title I, like kindergarten, first and second graders, reading and math. It was the kids that were like in the low end of the grading, like they had struggles. I taught them for the first semester. And then the second semester, I taught um, second grade. I only taught one year. And then after that, I got my pink slip. I didn't get rehired because they cut five teaching positions that year. So I just substitute taught for a couple of years until I discovered kind of painting and all the things. And so, um, this gave me way more flexibility and allowed me to be way more creative. And I'm, I feel like I'm exactly where I'm meant to be. Yeah, Painters Clubhouse members get the bonuses also. They always do. Uh, you're in love with that round sign. It is linked in my um, in my shop at shopdoorhangers.com. Just type in Hello Fall Fence. Hello Fall Fence because it's got the little picket fence on there and you'll find it. Okay. Any other questions? Karen says, I joined Painters Clubhouse today. Yay, Karen. I love your uh, your last name, Swartwood. I thought it said Smartwood at first. I was like, that's a cool name. Swartwood is really cool too. I've never heard of that one. 
uh, perfect for painting on wooden door hangers. She said, I missed the bonus from last night because my internet stinks. One of my disadvantages of living in a rural area. I just finished cutting my hanger. Can't wait to paint it. Karen, when you get it painted, take a picture, post it in the clubhouse. We want to cheer for you. That is awesome. Thank you, Roxana. Hey, friend. She just came in here and said best club for sure. Do you sell brushes? Yeah, we sell brushes at shopdoorhangers.com. There's several different kinds over there you can choose from. Um, any other questions? I'll be happy to hang around and answer all the questions if y'all have got more. If not, I'm going to log off and I'll come back at 10 a.m. tomorrow to do a uh, membership site tour and show you all what is behind the scenes of the Painters Clubhouse and kind of give you a look inside the Painters Clubhouse Facebook group. And then at 1 p.m. tomorrow, I have another Painters Clubhouse member interview for you guys. I'll be interviewing somebody. And then tomorrow night at 7 p.m., we'll be painting this one for the third time in a whimsical fashion with, or not, sorry, not whimsical, glam fashion with maybe glitter or foil or something like that. So if you've never seen it, somebody use foil on a project, you're in for a treat. All right, y'all. I will see you in the Painters Clubhouse. Come and join us. Go to paintersclubhouse.com. Bye, guys.